Hello and welcome to MTV. I have my pink dress on, so you know what it means. We are going to talk about love and this time also about sex. In this episode, our love priest Pauline lets students confess about their love life. Sabina asks students about how self-care helped them to love themselves. And Nora discovered that all students use contraceptions, but their friends don't. And talking about sex, here with me today is cultural socio sociologist Samira van Bohemen from Erasmus Love Lab. She conducts research on stereotypes in online for pornography. Uh, welcome, uh, Samira. Thank you. And uh, from all topics in the world, why did you choose to research pornography? Oh, it's a very long story. Um, and it started basically with wanting to study the social side of sexual desire. Way, way back, I think three or four years ago, I wanted to I, I wrote, I wrote a really big grant proposal, mm -hmm. wanting to study the social side of sex and of sexual desire. And um, one way in which I and several colleagues thought that it was kind of convenient uh, to do this was studying pornography because pornography makes the social side of sex uh, somewhat very clear. So uh, pornography uses very clear categories. Mm -hmm. uh, it categorizes people um, yeah, very clearly. And people also search for social categories and stereotypes on pornography. So basically, this is how it started. So wanting to start to study the social side of sex. But of course, there were many reasons uh, for why I eventually uh, yeah. Yeah, began to do this research. And another reason is that pornography is just a very popular medium. So I just um, did another presentation on this, so I remember the numbers. If you only look at like the three most popular pornography websites in the world, we know that per minute, almost or more than half a million people watch these websites. Okay. So per minute. So it, yeah, it amounts to, I mean, hundreds of millions of viewers uh, yeah. per day uh, yeah, and, every, and billions yeah. Uh, yeah. a year. So it's, it's just so popular. And in that sense, we still don't know a lot about it. And as I said, pornography makes the social side of sex uh, very explicit in, in the sense Because, because it's not real sex? Because it's staged or how, what do you mean? Uh, it's staged, but it's also very explicit. So it's very explicit in its titles, it's very explicit about gender, gender relations, it's very explicit yeah. about eth yeah, ethnicity and yeah. race, yeah. Uh, yeah. things that people tend to yeah, be very, very much less explicit yeah. about in their everyday lives. Yeah. It becomes very explicit in pornography. So it's like microscope for... Yeah, right. That's that's one of the ideas that it could be a little bit of a microscope for what happens more broadly in society, mm -hmm. because in society, people also find things attractive on the basis of what they've learned about the social group they belong to as uh, it relates to other social groups that people define. So this is something that happens very broadly within society. So yes, it can be a little bit of a microscope, but on the other hand, it can also be something different, right? So I think that's also important to say that what people view in pornography is not necessarily what they may want to do in their mm. everyday lives. So yes, it's a microscope, but it's not one-on-one -on -one a microscope. We can still see it also a little bit as a separate sphere, but in being a separate sphere, it still allows us to uh, yeah, get to know much more yeah. about the social side of, uh, of sex. Very, very interesting. But how yeah. do you conduct the research? Well, we're going to conduct the research in several ways. Um, first, we're starting right now um, with actually a, a software engineer from the Netherlands eScience Center. And basically, we're, we're looking at these pornography websites and we're trying to identify like what sort of social stereotypes mm. are uh, popular within these websites. So not just what, what can we find here, but what is actually popular? What do people actually apparently enjoy watching yeah. or search for. Yeah. Um, has this maybe changed also over time? That's, yeah. uh, that's one thing that we're researching. And then when we have the information about that, we want to do uh, at least a survey experiment in which we want to see if people with different social characteristics actually enjoy different types of stereotypes because they have learned to find other things erotic or yeah. interesting yeah. than maybe what other people yeah. have learned. Uh, so that's the second part. 
And the third part is we're going to inter yeah, interview young people between the age of 16 and 25 about yeah, their pornography watching habits yeah. and what sort of stereotypes they encounter and how they interact with these stereotypes. Do yeah. they believe these things are real or do they maybe negotiate these stereotypes and how does it relate yeah. also to their sexual development? And uh, you said that you are working together with an um, um, engineer? A software engineer. So, so you don't have to watch... The porn itself? Well, oh, that's, in, that's an interesting one, yes. I'm going to have to watch also some porn, basically on the basis of um, what we find. If we find oh, from the, the algorithm. Yes. Yes, so we basically we're trying to research on the um, metadata, uh, what is popular, so what sort of stereotypes are popular. Um, and then a subsection of that I'm going to watch and then analyze uh, okay. yeah, more inductively. Uh, but another thing we're going to try to do is we're going to try to develop also a tool with which we can also analyze automatically like video data. So to see what sort of scripts there are within videos. That would be really advanced if we're managing to do that. I know there are, there is some research who's doing this with CCTV cameras, but that's, yeah, the narratives there are quite simple um, as compared to these much more complex yeah. narratives in pornography. Yeah. But yeah, that's what we're going to try to achieve here. Uh, wow. So yeah. Yes. But what are the stereotypes? Well, some examples of stereotypes. So stereotypes of gender, like women being much more submissive yeah. or available to sex, men being more dominant. But there are also all these uh, stereotypes about race and ethnicity. So Asian women who are often presented as exotic, mm -hmm. uh, but also... Not only in porn, but okay. Not only, <laughs> not only in porn. No, and pornography in that sense is also... So the narratives you find there also come from yeah. the broader society yeah. and come from a history also, in this case, of colonialism, yeah. for instance. That's why we still have uh, some of these stereotypes, like the exotic Asian woman or the, the black, black man, man with yeah. a heightened libido or yeah, large genitalia. Yeah. That's yeah. where that comes from. It, it comes from a long history of, of social inequality yeah. and uh, also yeah, some groups trying to dominate other groups as well. Are, are yeah. they always negative, the stereotypes? I don't know. It, it also depends from your maybe from your perspective. As a cultural sociologist, I struggle with this mm -hmm. because um, it also it very much depends on the meaning that people uh, attribute to yeah. that. And uh, yeah, so for me, it's very difficult to say, well, a stereotype is uh, negative. But yeah, I do also want to be mindful that some of these stereotypes really do have, yeah, they are very much connected to a long history of social inequality yeah. between certain groups. So yeah, some stereotypes have benefited certain groups more than other groups uh, yeah. in uh, yeah. in the past, and and it may also yeah. be still in the future. But in general, is pornography bad for you? That's also a very difficult uh, question to answer. I wouldn't say so. I think if it's really bad for people, why do so many people then uh, then then also watch it and and enjoy it and um, yeah and go on and have normal lives? So um, I mean. Uh, yeah, probably if you ask a psychiatrist who is also dealing with people who are addicted to pornography, then uh, yeah, probably you get a different yeah. answer. But uh, yeah, this is watched on such a massive uh, scale. And yeah, I think we must be mindful of the fact that it can also be enjoying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 for people's enjoyment and yeah. for people's pleasure. Yeah. And yeah, then how does that work and how does that relate to these stereotypes? Yeah. Um, if people, so many people take pleasure in watching these stereotypes, what sort of implications does that have, uh, have for themselves, for their, for their sexuality, but also for society yeah. uh, at large? I yeah. think that's something uh, that still needs researching. And you are going to work together with students as well, right? For the, for the quiz or for the, uh, to, to know how they are consuming uh, yeah. pornography? Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure, yeah. For, yeah. Or with young people, yeah. Young. yeah. Okay. yeah. I think you will have a lot of uh, people who are interested in it. Yes, yes, I think so too. Um, I'm doing a lot of talks uh, these days uh, about this topic and it tends to draw a crowd. Uh, but drawing a crowd to listen to you talk about the type of research you're going to do, maybe something different than people actually wanting to talk about what they're actually looking at um, and wanting to share yeah, these personal intimate things. So that's something that uh, I think is still uh, 
we have to wait and see and hope that indeed a lot of young okay. people uh, want to. Of course, we have our strategies yeah. to make sure that we will have a large and diverse population. But yeah, uh, yeah that, that will be a challenge, well. I think. Well, thank you for coming and thank you for sharing your stories. And uh, good luck with the research. We would love to hear your results uh, in five years, right? Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. From online pornography, we are moving to real life sex. Did you have safe sex uh, the last time you did it? Recent research shows that one in five young people don't use contraception. Reporter Nora asks students about their sex life and whether they use birth control. Yeah, gewoon condoom. Condoom, pil, allebei of geen van beide. Uit onderzoek blijkt dat in Nederland één op de vijf jongeren zichzelf niet beschermt tijdens de seks. En dat is twee keer zoveel als vijf jaar geleden. Ik wil weten hoe onze studenten daarnaar kijken en of zij zichzelf beschermen tijdens de seks. Wat gebruik je dan meestal om jezelf te beschermen en je partner? Gewoon een condoom. My girlfriend uses the, uh, the pill. Alleen een spiraal. Mm -hmm. Ja, ik voordat ik de pil. Ik ben heel benieuwd of jij die getallen en cijfers herkent in jouw omgeving of bij jezelf. Ik ik ken mensen die het structureel niet doen, ook vijf jaar geleden niet, bescherming. Dus uh, nee, ik zou niet weten of er nu een verandering in is uh, gekomen. I would say that's not a huge topic of discussion amongst my friends group for sure. Ja, af en toe wel ja. Dat ik denk van, had nou, had nou gewoon iets gebruikt. Dat is wel handig. Begrijp je waarom mensen het soms niet gebruiken, hoe dat komt? Uh, nee, want het is wel in mijn oog heel belangrijk om te gebruiken. Nou, ik kan het begrijpen dat dat misschien beter klinkt dan elke, dan elke maand en jarenlang achter elkaar uh, de pil slikken, wat natuurlijk heel veel hormonen bevat. Ja, misschien toch wel het bekende ding dat um, vooral mannen natuurlijk zeggen dat ze er minder behoefte aan hebben. Een beetje gedronken hebt, dan ben je wat losser en dan maak je misschien eerder de beslissing om het niet te doen. Ik denk dat het echt wel een stukje sociale druk is eigenlijk. Mensen, dat mensen zoiets hebben van ja... Um, ik, ik, ik schaam me ervoor om uh, te vragen om een condoom of ik schaam me ervoor om het zelf mee te nemen. Um, en dat ze daarom zoiets hebben van nou ik neem een morning after pill of zo. Waarom is het belangrijk voor jou om ja, jezelf te beschermen? Nou, ik, ja, voor, voornamelijk omdat ik nog niet klaar ben voor kinderen. Ik denk niet dat je graag met ziektes rond wil lopen die je dan ook nog kan overdragen aan andere mensen. Ja, we zijn allebei heel erg uh, van carrière maken. Nou, laatste vraag. Safe sex, in or out? In natuurlijk. <laughs> in, 100%. In, of course. What is the most awkward blunder you've ever made during a date? Our love priest Pauline talks with students and let them confess their love and their sins. The whole of my primary school fine day. I was five years old and I thought the world was going to end. Today we're on campus to ask students about their latest love confessions. Let's go. Hoe heeft u uw vrouw ontmoet? En dat was een feest. En daar raakte ik in gesprek. Nou, was gezellig. As you may be able to tell that I, I'm the priest, so you can confess all your love stories to me and there's a little tube on the side. Where you can like, so I'll be able to hear your story. En toen lag ik s'avonds in mijn bed. Het was boven mij, het was een heel lawaaiig feest aan de gang, dus ik kon toch niet slapen. Yeah. En toen ben ik weer opgestaan, ben naar boven gegaan, dat was studentenflat. En daar kwam ik haar weer tegen en toen raakte ik weer in gesprek. What was your first crush ever? My first crush was a boy named David from Malaysia. And then I told my sister, and she was friends with his older sister. And then the whole of my primary school found out. I was five years old and I thought the world was going to end. Have you ever had a campus crush? It was during lockdown and I was locked in my student housing. So I decided to choose someone and, find a, and have a crush on. And he was this guy from IBA. What study is the biggest red flag? IBA, for sure. Or IBA. Why? Because it's like the most basic study. And a lot of them are very fratty, also very Dutch very just all oh, finance bros and and what are you going to do on valentine's day this year oh, i have no plans galentines i guess what's ga what's galentines <laughs> oh no, okay so it's like when lonely women bond together and celebrate it together if you don't have someone to love on this valentine's day you can just love yourselves right and if we must believe tiktok skincare is part of self-love so our reporter Sabina asked students about their skincare regime and the trends around it. During the past 20 years, taking care of yourself became very popular. Let's find out how much effort and time the students put into self-care. Usually how much do you spend per month? On, on skincare. 
10 euros, something like that? A month, I think it's around like 50, 60 euros. Up to 20 euros, something like that. For me, it's a bit easier. I just use whatever my girlfriend has. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a uh, facial cleanser, moisturizer, um, a <laughs> couple masks there and here and there. Okay, so they're like um, morning and evening skincare. Uh, in the evening, it's much more interesting, I would say, because first I clean my face. Uh, then I put a serum for hydration and then I put only hydration. Uh, I have like seven sub skincare routine. Uh, coming from the country there is very like bad pollution and you need to take care of skin. Um, I try to have like one day or something a week where I like do my nails or something mm -hmm. for myself. Right now let's talk about sport. What kind of sports do you do? I do futsal, boxing, gym. We're gonna try to go to the gym oh, more. <laughs> Uh, for me, sports has been a big part of my life uh, ever since I was a little kid. Um, and yeah, I play futsal right now at university. Shout out to RS3. We play for the same, same team, actually. Uh, and yeah, I play football as well at Anti Barbary, which is also a student, a student team. And yeah, go gym. Do more self-care. Thank you all for watching. We will be back in two weeks. In the meantime, you can go to erasmusmagazine.nl for more news. Bye-bye.